press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from Workspace. I remember songs and singing a great deal because my mother used to sing very well and my aunt was quite a celebrated singer. She used to um, make records for HMV. And I remember very vividly my trip to the HMV, the Gramophone Company Studios. And the first recording session which I attended, I, I think by about, again, about six, half or seven at that time, they were before the electrical uh, recording days. They used to have to sing in front of a horn. And uh, they were all English engineers. For some mysterious reason, there was a, were some records of classical music in our house, although nobody, nobody was really interested. Western classical music, um, there was one movement of Beethoven's violin concerto. There was the usual things which I think even Bengalis bought them, violin records by Chrysler, songs by Shaliapin and things like that. Every sort of uh, well-to-do or upper-class Bengali, middle-class house had some records of Western music. Violin was very popular as an instrument, so there would be records of Chrysler playing uh, odd pieces. Sketching, painting, drawing, I had it at the back of my mind while I was in college or even late school that I would be a professional artist doing perhaps some kind of commercial art. Uh, but I had no training for that. Uh, when the time came for me to decide what subjects I should specialize in, I had a very close friend of my father's uh, who was a statistician, Professor Mahalanobis, you may have heard of him. And uh, he said that you, you study economics because I have a magazine called, a uh, statistical magazine called Sankha. You can always get a job there for 250 rupees a month or something. I was not terribly interested in economics, really. And I think my two years as a student of BA was more or less wasted. I lost interest in college because it was not my subject. I had to study it. I, I passed. I got an honors in economics. But it was not really my subject. And, but then my mother suggested, and I also agreed rather readily, that I should go to Shantiniket and spend some time there. And um, um, to be, Tagore was still living, and uh, they had some marvelous teachers like Nandalal Bose and Binod Mukherjee, Ram Kinkar Beige. And to be there for some time, she thought um, that it would be a good thing to be in Shantiniket. And, and, uh, in proximity to Tagore. I had some reservations about Indian art, Indian, the, the, the wishy-washy kind of rather sentimental stuff which used to come out in Ramananda Chatterjee's magazine, Modern Review and Prabhasi at that time. Every month there was a color reproductions and I didn't very much care for those. Uh, but I found eventually, uh, after joining Shantiniketan, that Indian art could also be very strong and virile, and uh, it's not all, all sentimental, sort of uh, Victorian kind of stuff. I uh, studied painting in Shantiniketan, but never uh, meant to become a painter. I needed the background of Indian classical art, perhaps to be able to use it in commercial art later. So I got to know about Eastern art, Chinese, Japanese, um, our own schools, and um, also Western art. I mean, starting from early Egyptian or cave painting, rock paintings too down to post-impressionists or even the later ones. Uh, when you came to Calcutta looking for a job, did you find it very difficult? No, actually I found it very easily. Um, it so happened that there was somebody who knew the assistant manager of DJ Kima, who was a Bengali chap. And it turned out that we had known that family for, uh, I knew his brother, sister, my wife knew the family very well, and so this old chap took me to Mr. D.K. Gupta, who eventually founded Signet Press. And I was just uh, almost uh, an apprentice, actually, a junior visualizer. I was getting 65 rupees a month. 
15 rupees DNS allowance. I was learning visualizing and typography and uh, layouts and uh, I was doing, there was a lot of uh, illustration in those days, not like now where you have mostly pho pho photographs. Illustrators were actually needed in those days. There was a lot of hand-drawn illustration, not photography, not models so much. Not f very few in those days actually. And also it's a lot of typographical work done by hand. Also, um, yes, yes indeed, because we didn't have a very a wide range of types in those days. So that I was doing, and uh, I think one series which came later, it was a series for Paludrin, enormous ads, just an illustration of various classes of people in Calcutta, lower middle class, middle class, even Englishmen. Uh, I think there was a part of six, uh, there was a series of six ads showing in great detail the interior of the houses. The idea was to take a paludrin every Sunday morning. So somebody was taking a paludrin or distributing a paludrin. There were children around. So that's very filmic, very, very filmic. What I was getting slightly fed up was uh, this having to deal with the yes. clients, you know. <laughs> yes. Working as almost as a, you no, know, that was uh, very demeaning, I yes. found, often. You have very few enlightened clients, actually. Very demeaning, and I was getting, I was really getting very tired of advertising, and I wanted to be absolutely free as an artist. Uh, cinema came, of course, much later. I think in my early school days, I, my main interest was stars. I was really a film fan, and I used to read magazines like Picture Gore and Photoplay and Film Pictorial and things like that. But then, Gradually, I think early years in college, I became more and more interested in uh, the, s the directorial aspect of filmmaking. I uh, became aware of the director, and I was reading up on people like John Ford and Ernst Lubitsch and William Wyler and Frank Capra, and um, looking for uh, their speciality in a film, their, their sort of special characteristics. I saw whatever John Ford films that I could get to see. And um, then, even later, early 40s, late 30s, the Hollywood comedies and the Hollywood thrillers and uh, very hard-edged films like the Billy Wilder films of the early 40s, Double Indemnity and Lost Weekend and uh, comedies like Major and the Minor. Uh, Leo McCary's comedies like with Cary Grant and Irene Dunn which were very, very fine. I have re-seen them on television, and they are still marvelous. And the Frank Capra films of the 30s, like um, It Happened One Night, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and all the others. So they were very, very well-crafted films. So my education really is based on these extremely well-written, well-directed, well-shot, well-acted films of the 30s and 40s. I got to know American films by, made by French uh, directors who had gone, left France and settled in Hollywood, like Duvivier, uh, Renoir himself, and a few others, uh, and the Germans, like uh, Fritz Lang and others, who were making American films, but making them in a very German, German sort of way. And the same goes for the French films. For instance, uh, uh, Renoir's first film that I saw was uh, The Southerner. It's an American story, mm, acted by Americans, but looking completely different from the American films. It was more French than, I mean, one could certainly recognize a completely new approach, narrative approach, a new style of filmmaking from looking at this American film made by a French director. So when Renoir came here, I was familiar with his French American films, like The Southerner and uh, the various other things that he made, Diary of a Chimmer made, This Land is Mine. But I didn't know his French films yet. Come here, Zuni. Johnny.
but in Shantiniketan, I was away, cut off from films. So I remember that uh, Citizen Kane came and went in Calcutta, and I was away in Shantiniketan. It was great regret that I was not in Calcutta when Citizen Kane was shown. But uh, uh, I, I made up for the lack of looking at films by reading uh, on the cinema as an art form. Nobody thought that the cinema was a very reliable profession or one should go into filmmaking. No, it was not that, certainly. I, I was thinking more in terms of a job as a commercial artist. Films of something to enjoy, not to make myself. No, there was no question of that at all. In fact, that came very much, much, much later, even when I was made, I was, uh, we were running the Film Society. We were anxious to study films, not to make them, but to understand them better. And even when uh, I first, uh, the first uh, time got involved or was about to get involved in a film, it was as a scriptwriter.